Hello doctors, good day. My name is Dr. Asad. Welcome to my channel Dentist.Asad. Today's our revision topic is dental injuries, luxation type. So we'll be discussing concussion, subluxation, extrusive luxation, lateral luxation and intrusive luxation along with American Academy of Endodontics Treatment Guidelines. Now coming to concussion. Concussion is a type of injury where the tooth will be extremely sensitive to touch and are percussion without any displacement and abnormal mobility. The clinical findings as we said, the tooth is very sensitive to touch, chew or percuss and even when the opposing teeth touches, there will be very severe sensitivity. So luckily, the pulp sensitivity and vitality tests are more likely to be positive stating that the damage is confined to the periodontal ligament and the pulp is almost the damage to the pulp is almost negligible. While well, coming to x-ray findings there will be no radiographic abnormalities are expected. To rule out displacement we have to take two periapical x-rays one from mesial one from distal. And now coming to immediate treatment, immediate treatment for concussion is there is no immediate treatment. But in cases where the tooth is very sensitive, even when the patient closes his mouth or when the patient's opposing tooth are touching, so in such cases we have to make some occlusal adjustments. Endodontic consideration that is whether patient requires any endodontic treatment at this moment or not. For this, we need to monitor the pulpal response until a definitive pulpal diagnosis can be made. Now coming to patient's instruction, patient should be advised to take soft diet for one week, maintain good oral hygiene and 0.12% chlorhexidine rinses twice a day for two weeks. Subluxation injuries. Concussion and subluxation injuries are mild form of luxation injuries without displacement. For subluxation injuries, the tooth is tender to touch and are percuss and the tooth will be mobile but not displaced. The clinical findings, there is a tenderness on percussion and there is mobility. The vitality tests are positive. Sensitivity tests may be initially negative stating there will be a partial damage to the pulp. While well, coming to x-ray findings, there will not be any obvious x-ray findings or you can see there is a widening of the periodontal ligament. Immediate treatment is to stabilize the tooth if needed using a flexible splint for two weeks. If there is excessive mobility, we need to stabilize the tooth for two weeks with the flexible splint. Endodontic consideration is we have to monitor the pulpal response until you get a definite pulpal diagnosis and then you can plan endodontic treatments. And patient instruction, patient is advised to take the soft diet for one week, maintain oral hygiene and 0.12% chlorhexidine rinses twice a week. The most important pathognomic sign of subluxation injury is bleeding from the gingival crevice due to cleavage and tearing of the periodontal ligament. Now coming to displacement dental injuries, extrusive luxation, lateral luxation and intrusive luxations are displacement luxations where there will be percussion, displacement and mobility of the involved teeth. In case of extrusive luxation, there will be displacement of the tooth outward or incisally. So clinically, you will see that the tooth appears elongated and it is excessively mobile. So for x-ray, we need one occlusal and two periapical x-rays, mesially and distally taken. And we can see localized increase in the width of the apical periodontal ligament space. While well, coming to immediate treatment, 
So in the case of extrusive luxation and lateral luxation, the tooth should be repositioned immediately with gentle care into the socket and should be stabilized with the functional splint. In the case of extrusive luxation, the splinting period is 2 weeks. In case of displacement luxation injuries, the most common complication is pulpal necrosis because of the wear and tear of the periodontal ligament and vascular supply to the tooth. Therefore, the need of careful monitoring and pulpal treatment is obvious in the case of extrusive, intrusive and lateral luxation injuries. And planning a endodontic treatment depends upon the root formation in these cases. Teeth with incomplete root formation, if the pulp becomes necrotic, then either we have to plan an apexification or pulp revascularization therapy. If the root is completely formed and the pulp has become non-vital or necrotic, in such cases, we can directly perform the root canal treatment. And patient instruction as usual, soft diet for one week, maintaining good oral hygiene and 0.12% chlorhexidine rinses twice a day for two weeks. Now coming to later luxation injuries, where the displacement of the tooth will be in any lateral direction except axially or apically, usually associated with a fracture of the facial cortical bone. As we said, there is there will be an alveolar fracture. That fracture can be palpable clinically and the root apex can be locked into that fracture and make the tooth immobile and giving a metallic sound on percussion just like the tooth has become ankylosed. And as we said, the displacement injuries will have rupture of the pedial and the vascular supply to the tooth. Here in this case, the sensitivity and vitality tests are more likely to be negative. Now coming to radiographic finding, CBCT is the best and recommended option by the American Academy of Endodontics. So if you are going for a normal radiographs, you have to as usual, take two periapical radiographs, one mesially and distally, and it is accompanied with an occlusal radiograph. Immediate treatment includes rinsing the affected area with the saline, and as we said, all the displacement injuries should be immediately repositioned except the intrusive injury. So, we have to reposition the tooth digitally or with a forcep with a dislodging force from that bony lock and gently repositioning it into the virginal location and suturing the soft tissues, especially in the cervical area and stabilizing the tooth for two weeks using a flexible splint. And if the displacement is extensive, then we have to stabilize for about four weeks. That is the stabilization period of lateral luxation injuries are from two to four weeks. As we discuss, the displaced luxating injuries will usually have a pulpal complication and its management depends upon the root formation. If the root is incomplete and it has become non-vital or necrosed, then we have to consider apexification or regenerative endodontic procedures like revascularization therapy or if the root is complete then we can plan a root canal treatment for the necrosed complete root formed tooth. Apart from the pulpal damage we can see periodontal complications also in later luxation injuries such like external root resorption marginal bone loss and ankylosis and this is due to the delayed or incorrect repositioning of the tooth. Now coming to intrusive luxation, here the displacement of the tooth will be in the inward direction or into the alveolar bone. The clinical findings will be 
the tooth appears partially or totally infra occluded immobile or locked and you can palpate the fracture of the alveolar process sometimes if the intrusion is very severe it may even perforate into the nasal cavity also and the sensitivity and the vitality tests are most likely to be negative and the tooth will be tender to percuss giving a metallic sound as though it is ankylosed now coming to radiographic finding as usual one occlusal two periapical radiographs taken from the two directions and radiographically we can see that the cemento enamel junction of the tooth is more apical than the adjacent uninjured tooth and we can see that the periodontal ligament space is absent on certain areas or even totally absent so if the tooth is totally intruded we have to consider a lateral cephalogram in order to evaluate the penetration into the nasal cavity in cbct you can see that the pdl space may be absent mainly on the sagittal and the coronal planes as we discussed earlier in the case of intrusive luxation it might not be possible or not advise to manipulate the tooth immediately the tooth should be allowed for reeruption without intervention and if there is no movement even after this reeruption period say 2 to 3 weeks then we have to consider initiating surgical or orthodontical repositioning of the teeth we should not allow the reeruption period more than 3 weeks because there are the chances of development of ankylosis if once an ankylosis is developed then it will be difficult for orthodontic extrusion or surgical repositioning the decision depends upon the stage of root formation age of the patient and depth of intrusion in case of incomplete root formation if the intrusion is up to 7 mm then we have to allow for reeruption without intervention let's say about 3 weeks if there is no movement even after 3 weeks then we have to consider orthodontic repositioning but in the case where the intrusion is more than 7 mm then we have to plan surgical or orthodontic repositioning within 3 weeks that is before the ankylosis starts in the case of complete root formation if the patient is less than 17 years old and the depth is not too much say 3 mm of intrusion in such cases you should allow reeruption without intervention but in the case of individual more than 17 years a matured individual with a more depth of intrusion then we have to consider surgical or orthodontic repositioning as quickly as possible say within 2 or 3 weeks again the splinting is flexible splint if the displacement is extensive we have to consider splinting period for about 4 weeks and the display if the displacement is not that deep then we can consider a 2 week splinting period and also endodontic consideration depends upon the root formation if the root is incompletely formed and tooth has become necros then we have to consider apexification or revascularization therapy and if the root is complete then and showing the signs of pulpal necrosis then you have to consider a root canal treatment as we discussed before in the case of displacement injuries pulpal necrosis is inevitable in most of the cases so if you are planning an endodontic therapy then plan after 2 weeks of the injury with a calcium hydroxide dressing for up to 4 weeks and now the patient instruction as usual soft diet for one week maintaining good oral hygiene 0.12% chlorhexidine rinse 
twice a day for two week period. Let's speak about some additional information given in AE literature, which I thought it will be very helpful. So the splinting time for the various types of injuries. So here, subluxation, extrusive luxation, avulsion, lateral luxation, a minimum splint period is two weeks. But in the case of lateral luxation, if the luxation is uh, extensive, we have to consider up to four weeks. So for lateral luxation, always the splinting period is two to four weeks, depends upon the severity of the uh, luxation. In the case of intrusion, four weeks splinting time. For the cases of root fracture, middle one third root fracture, four weeks, alveolar fracture, four weeks, and root fracture at the cervical end, four months. So what about the follow-up procedures? So you have to recall the patient after two weeks, four weeks, six to eight weeks, six months, one year, and every year you have to recall the patient up to five years. So in the two weeks and four weeks, so you have to consider if you have given any splinting, considering the removal of the splint. Subsequently, you have to evaluate the teeth clinically and radiographically for favorable outcomes and or unfavorable outcomes. The favorable outcomes will be asymptomatic tooth, signs of healed periodontium clinically and radiographically, positive sensitivity and vitality test, no marginal bone loss, continued root end development in the case of immature teeth. In the case of unfavorable outcome, the teeth will be symptomatic or the symptoms becomes worsen or you can see a pulpal necrosis or apical periodontitis with internal or external resorption, breakdown of the marginal bone, etc. With this, our lecture comes to end. This revision series is based on the standardized guidelines, which gives more essential inputs for your exams and interviews. Hope you would have liked this topic. Please comment your feedback and the topics you want to know more. The topics, the doubts, the guidance, whatever related to dentistry, please ask us. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe our channel.